Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are continuing the 100 Dragon Challenge. So, today's prompt is an interesting one. Um, I would have to say that this has been requested a lot, specifically for monster mashes. I would say I see it more often for monster mashes than for dragons, but I thought it fit 100 dragons really well, so I couldn't help but do a dragon fly. We're literally making a dragon inspired by a dragonfly, so it's kind of a combination of the insect and the dragon. So it's an all-in-one, like, great combo, and I was really excited to jump in and start this. So at least my thought process going into this was I really wanted it to look like the actual insect. I really wanted to highlight some cool insect features, and I really enjoy doing insect dragons. I've already done the bee dragon, I did the ant dragon, and this one I wanted to for sure highlight the overall look of a dragonfly, but make sure that it, it does look like a dragon. And when I was doing research on dragonflies, like I've seen them around here in Arizona, they're pretty abundant, especially closer to where like the lakes are um, here in Chandler and a couple other places, but I mean, I've never really studied them, I haven't looked at them really close. And they are beautiful creatures, like there's so many different color varieties, different shapes and textures to them, and I was really excited to try to convert that into a dragon. So for sure I wanted to do the big bug eyes that the dragonflies have. I just love those, they look so cool, and especially their like, the color transition that happens in their eyes is amazing. Like if you google dragonfly like pictures, there's so many eyes that do these amazing color transitions. So I wanted that to be a big highlight. And then I also wanted the overall body to also reflect the original dragonfly. So I have like that longer tail and I wanted to have more of the insect wings again. And uh, I wanted to have lots of cute little claws. So I decided to do uh, six different legs. I actually, now that I think about it, I think, do dragonflies have six legs? I don't remember. If, if they do, and I was smart and remembered from my reference, maybe they do, I don't know. But I decided to do six legs here, and then I wanted uh, some cool flare and texture to the back of its neck, so I thought we could mimic the uh, wing patterning and put it like as little, um, I don't know, sails on its neck, I guess you would call it. So with that figured out, it was time to jump in and lay out this final dragon. So I decided to go um, vertical for this one because I wanted it kind of flying and uh, had like a front facing angle to the camera so I could show off a lot of those details. And then I just like the idea of the wings expanding out past the size of the page. I, it's hard because like on one hand, part of me wanted to make sure the whole design fit on the page, but I was like, no, I really just want to highlight the texture of the the body area of this thing so i'm okay with the wings going off the page that's totally fine with me and it was a little hard to figure out a pose at first honestly because you know at least for dragonflies there's a couple of poses that i've seen them in but i was like no this is more of a dragon dragonfly so i have to think in that term but after i figured out a pose that i was really happy with it was time to jump in and do the line art so I feel I keep one-upping myself in terms of the length of line art because, oh my gosh, guys, this took so long. I had to take breaks because I felt my eyes were going cross-eyed because I was like, you know what we should do? Add a ton of detail to this, like really go all out. And I know, I think one of my favorite comments that I see you guys make here and there is when, uh, oh man, I don't even remember when I said it, but it was early in the 100 Dragons Challenge. I basically said I will do full bodies when I have time, but there will be more dragon headshots than full bodies. And here I am doing only full bodies now because I just have so much fun with those instead of just the headshots and I just like doing the overall design in general. But this is one of those times where I was like, oh my god, there's so much detail, why did I do this to myself? It ended up taking a really long time to do all the line art. This body part isn't as hard, like the, the segmentation of the body. It's when I go in and do these wings. These wings were murder because I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just go ahead and be accurate to the dragonfly and try to mimic and replicate how those wings like look. 
And once you do one, you can't stop. There's no way of being like, oh yeah, you know, whatever, it's okay, I won't do the other ones. No, I had to do all of them. And I, you know, I dedicated. And that is what took the longest, was just doing all these little segmentations of the wings. Holy crap, like I actually sped it up faster in this recording than the rest of my line art. I did, I think, a thousand five hundred times instead of my usual thousand times speed. And oh my gosh, it just, this took most of the time. I kept taking breaks in between because like, I just was going cross-eyed, doing all these little details, and it was just really exhausting to chug out all of these little extra lines in the wings and then along the frill on the back of the neck. So after that first initial wave of line art, I decided to erase away any of the pencil lines so I could see things a little bit better and then go in and add the dark, uh, high or not highlights. I don't know how to describe it. I guess the segments between the exoskeleton of the dragonfly, I don't know. I really should learn more about like bug anatomy because I say it enough and I just don't know enough about it. but. You know, one day, maybe one day I'll learn all that, but either way, I wanted to put solid black in between those different plates on the body, just because I've seen that done on a lot of different dragonflies, like in nature. Not all of them have it from what I've seen, but there's a few that do, and I just think it looks really cool, and I think it worked really well for this dragon. And now it's back into doing more little detailing on these little things. I don't know why I did this to myself. It looks super cool. So, I mean, I understand why I did it, but God, it just took so long. And I was like, you know, I just have all these cool little frills and it's gonna be really cool and I'll make them look like the wings. And hours later, they finally looked like the wings. And oh my gosh, worth it, but so exhausting. Now with the line art out of the way, it was time to jump in and do some color. So I really pushed my comfort zone on this coloring. I noticed that there are some dragonflies that are, you know, like primarily green or primarily red or primarily blue. And I decided to go for more of the dragonflies that have a lot of different colors in them. This is very much like a rainbow dragonfly. We have blues and purples and orange and red and greens. Like I had so many different colors and I had the idea in my head while I was picking these colors out and I was really excited to start coloring it. And I did have a reference open for a dragonfly, especially for these eyes. I wanted to really nail the eyes and I think that's my favorite part of this whole drawing was just how these ended up looking. Oh, I just love them so much. And then them with the brighter colors that I'm going to be putting on here in a little bit, like this green I really like, and it looks really nice with those cool eyes. And then I add a pop of yellow and orange and red to its chest, and I just think it looks really cool. It kind of has this, I don't know, internal exoskeleton-y look to it. I, I don't know how to describe it. I think uh, one of my friends described it best that it looks kind of squishy. <laughs> so I, I just really love how the coloring plays off of each other and it's very much multiple different color families complementing each other and I honestly probably wouldn't try this normally um, but I'm really glad that I stumbled across the reference image I did on Google when I was looking through all the different dragonfly colors I found one that was obviously this 
color combination and I just loved it and I had to try it. I'm really glad that I did. I think my favorite color combo on this is those blues and purples. Like I love it in the eyes and I really love it on the forearms as well. I mean, all of it works together very well, at least to me, but those, ugh, those blues and purples, they just look so cool. And I'm like, I need to use that color combo again in the future. I don't know what for, but I want to use those blues and purples together in some other piece in the future. Maybe for one of the uh, seven deadly sin uh, dragons. I don't know which one, because I feel we already did like two bluish purple ones, I, but maybe I'll use it for something. I really love that color combo and I'd love to use it again. So now with the main chunk of colors, I just added a couple more extra highlights with my white gel pen and we are done. I am so excited to see your guys' Dragonfly Dragons. There is a lot you can do with this one. I think you guys are gonna make so many diverse and interesting designs. So if you wanna join in and make a Dragonfly Dragon to be potentially featured in next week's video, make sure to post it on Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag KM100Dragons. But let's go ahead and jump in and look at last week's Krampus Dragons that you guys made. First off, Gamel of Nine, I think, Gamel of Nine. Uh, I really like yours. It's such a cute design and I like your horns, how they have like a really awesome gradient and the wings look really nice too. I love this one a lot. And it's, it's kind of like a fun, playful Krampus dragon to me at least. I know he looks kind of intimidating, but also cute to me. And then Scorching Shadow, I love how you incorporated the bag to hold all the children and that the sticks that like Krampus like whips the kids with are the wings. And you also incorporated the goat extra bits like the, the hooves and the horns and like I love the torch, really cool. Overall love this design a lot. And there were some great entries guys. Thank you for participating in the Krampus Dragon and I cannot wait to see what you guys make for the Dragonfly Dragon. So thanks again guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video and if you aren't already I'd super appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and join our little community and if you have an idea for a dragon that I should draw please leave it down in the comments below. I collect all of my ideas from either you guys on here or discord or the twitter that I uh, have a tweet that you can reply to as well. All those links are down in the description if you want to check out the discord or the tweet but either way Thank you guys so much for stopping by and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.